Welcome to this video. My name is Phil and I am a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln and in this video I wanted to give you a couple of ways or methods that you can use to calculate the semi-major axis of a orbit. This can be for a circular orbit or an elliptical orbit but mostly it will apply to an elliptical orbit because most orbits are elliptical anyway. So for a circular orbit what is the semi-major axis? Well this semi-major axis is essentially the orbital radius or the distance between the two objects so the central object in this example here I've put a star uh, well actually let's say it's actually going to be the sun and then the earth and the star the sun and the central one would be the most massive object and then the smaller object is going to be the one going around the outside that's the one that's orbiting so the distance between those two objects on its orbit will always be the same if the orbit is circular so the semi-major axis is that distance between the two objects at all time if it's a circular orbit. Now, in reality, orbits are not circular. They are at least, they have some ellipt ellipticalness to them. So they have some eccentricity. So if you have an elliptical orbit, then the shape of that is like an ellipse, like this here. Now they have two axes. They have a major one and a minor one. The major axis is the longest length along that ellipse. The semi-major axis is just half of that major axis. So we just want half of that axis to get our semi-major axis. And it's an important orbital element of orbits. And then the minor axis is just obviously uh, perpendicular to that. So that's the opposite one. That's actually the, the shortest distance across the ellipse, whereas the major one is the longest, okay? Now, how do we actually calculate the value for that semi-major axis? Well, if you know the orbital period and the mass of that central large object, so in this case here, the star or the sun, then you can use Kepler's third law. So Kepler's third law states that the cube of the semi-major axis, which is A here on the left-hand side in yellow, is proportional to the square of the orbital period, which is P. And if you know, again, the mass and those other constants, you can then calculate an actual value for the semi-major axis. Now, you'd probably rewrite this in this form here. You'd take the cube root so that you've got A on the left-hand side, and then you've got what you need to calculate the semi-major axis. So, P here in green is your orbital period. So if you know how long it takes to go round, so for example, we know how long one year is, that's how long it takes the Earth to go around the sun. So we've got our orbital period for the Earth. And if we know the mass of the, the sun or a star, we can use that. Now, when you're doing your calculation here, make sure that your units for your mass of the central object and the orbital period are in the same units that you're using for your gravitational constant. So it could be that your gravitational constant has time units of seconds, so you'd need to make sure that your orbital period was also in seconds. Same again with the mass. It might be in kilograms. So convert your mass for your star into kilograms, which is going to be a big number, by the way. So just make sure that whatever version of G you're using, you're using the correct units for mass and orbital period as well. Now, if you do that, you can then get a value for this semi-major axis, which will be given in units related to whatever you've used for G. So it might be that it gives it in meters. And if you're doing a planetary orbit, you probably want to put that in something like AU, so it's a bit more understandable, where 1 AU is the average distance between the Earth and the Sun, which is 1 AU would be 1, basically. However, if you don't know the orbital period and you don't know the mass of the central object, you can still get the semi-major axis using the shortest and longest distance between the two objects during the orbit. So if I use the example of the Earth-Sun system here again, then we'll have the perihelion, which is the shortest distance between the Earth and the Sun on its orbit, and the aphelion, which is the opposite one. So that's the longest distance between the two. If you know those two distances on the orbit, so you could probably measure how far away the Sun is over the course of the year, and you could work out when it was at its minimum and its maximum, you can also get the semi-major axis. Because if you add those two together, it will then give you your major axis of the ellipse. And if you half that, that will give you your semi-major axis, which is what we want again. So there's a few ways you can get this. It depends what information you have. I thank you for watching. And if you've got any ideas for future videos, then just let me know in the comments.